Hi, I'm Stuart from the Norfolk Honey Company and welcome back to another of our winter featured videos and today we're at our University of East Anglia apiary where we're about to check out the allotment beehive that we had on the allotment all of last year. It was the one that we used for our uh, initial first year beekeepers to show how a nuke can go into a beehive and then expand through the summer. And I thought it would be a good idea to just come along and take a look at that colony now and just pop some fondant on them just to give them a little bit of extra food. Um, I actually don't think they need any more food, but I thought if we were going to have a look at this colony, then it would be worth just popping some fondant on them at the same time. Uh, but before we get started with that and uh, proceed with the video, I just wanted to highlight another video that uh, I've recently seen on YouTube. And this is featuring uh, a beekeeper called Martin Hocking, and he's from the Woolacoom apiaries. And he's the beekeeper that discovered the Asian Hornet in Devon last year. And uh, he has given a presentation of his experiences uh, of that particular event and how the whole uh, scenario unfolded, how he discovered the Asian Hornet and the response that he had. And I think for beekeepers here in the UK, it's going to be really important that we get on to tracking and identifying Asian Hornets as soon as they enter the country. We need to support the National Bee Unit and all of the government bodies that are doing their best to try to identify and eradicate this invasive species. And I think the bottom line is that the beekeeper is the front line of the defence against the Asian Hornet. So please do take a look at that video and I'll pop a link in the description below so that you can simply click on that and go across to take a look at that video. So back to today's video, uh, it's a really chilly day today compared to yesterday. Uh, we had temperatures up in the low double figures centigrade, the bees were out flying, the sun was shining and uh, I had a look at a couple of apiaries and really couldn't do a great deal in terms of uh, checking bees uh, for the number of seams of bees that they had for my traffic light um, beehive shuffle system that I, I employ. Uh, but today it's really cold, I've got my lucky hat on, uh, good luck to the Philadelphia Eagles next week. And um, what I'd like to do is to just take a look at the allotment hive. And you will recall that uh, this is the colony that we had at the allotment and we've moved it down to the UEA so that we can clean up and tidy the apiary at the allotment. I'm very fortunate in having multiple sites that I can move bees around. And so we're cleaning up at the allotment and the colony is here at our UEA site. So rather than just taking the roof off and, and having a quick look underneath, I thought I'd bring some fondant along and put some fondant on as well. Uh, I don't think they need it, but this is the block of fondant that I've got. It's Baker's fondant. Uh, it's wrapped in some cling film. Uh, and all I do is just peel uh, part of the cling film away and the benefit of the cling film is that it will keep the fondant nice and soft, it won't dry out quickly and the bees will be able to utilise that on days that they can break cluster and get into the, the fondant. As I say I don't think this colony needs any additional fondant but uh, as we were here I thought it would be a good idea to just show you the process uh, which is very very straightforward. Uh, the other thing to say is that if your bees are well fed and you're happy with their condition going into the winter, there's really no need to interfere with your bees through the winter until we get into spring. And uh, that could be as late as um, the back end of March. So um, don't start tampering with your bees, worrying unnecessarily about your bees. If you want to, then uh, pop some fondant on. If you've had a need to treat with oxalic acid then you probably will have already done that but other than that uh, you really don't need to be tampering with your bees at all uh, and this is purely for an example to show you the type of fondant and how we put the fondant on. So we're going to take the roof off and we're going to just pop the crime board and just see how many seams of bees we've got in the colony and then we'll pop the fondant on uh, top of the crime board 
and get the roof back on straight after that. So this is going to be a very quick process. Uh, first of all, let's do it this way. I'm just going to peel back some of the cling film so that bees can access the fondant. Um, somebody was asking about this particular hive tool. It's a, a J tool, a pro J tool from Bee Equipment Online. And again, I'll pop a link down in the description below so that you can go and take a look at that. But I really like this particular J tool. It's got a nice pointed edge, which helps scrape out frames and, and the like. Okay, so we're ready with the fondant. So we're just gonna pop the roof off. And you can see that they've created a big mass of um, ivy um, brace comb. So we're going to just quickly get rid of that. But let's just have a look to see what frames we've got. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six seams of bees. So we pop that down straight back on. So what I've done is uh, rather than leave that ivy honey on top of the crown board and the underside of the roof, is I've actually cut that away. I've removed the crown board and uh, cleaned up the crown board and then replaced it. So we're now in a position where we've got a clean crown board. I was going to leave it, but sometimes the bees find it difficult to use that honey. So uh, rather than leave it in there and make it awkward to try and get some fondant onto them, I've scraped that all off and we're now going to go back to the hive. Uh, I've put a uh, piece of corrugated uh, plastic on top of the two holes and we'll just slide one of those back and pop the fondant on. And then the bees can access that fondant, uh, which they can use more readily. So here we are back at the hive. Just gently take the roof off. And this is the sheet of plastic. And I'm just going to slide it forward. That reveals the hole. And we'll just pop the fondant on top of the hole. And now the bees have free access to that fondant. And uh, if they want it, they can take it down quite nicely. The fondant will sit in the recess of the roof, so we don't need to put an eek on top or uh, an empty super, and uh, they should now be well set for the rest of this winter. We'll just pop the roof back on, and away we go. We'll leave those bees now until the spring. There's no need to go back into them. They've got plenty of bees in there. It's going to be a good colony for next year, and we'll be moving them back to the allotment apiary in due course. I hope you found that interesting. Don't forget to take a look at uh, Martin Hocking's uh, video and the link is down in the description below. Uh, also, don't forget to take a look at our Facebook group, which is Stuart's Beekeeping Basics. And also check us out on Instagram and Twitter. And finally, my thanks again to everyone who has signed up to support us on our Patreon page. And again, I'll put some details down in the description below for that. Some of you will be aware that uh, I'm about to release an online beekeeping course for beginners. Uh, it's designed for absolute beginner beekeepers and if you're new to beekeeping or thinking of starting beekeeping, then please do take a look at that. You can find more information about the course on my website or if you go to our Facebook group, which is Stuart's Beekeeping Basics, then there'll be some information posted there as well. The course goes live on Friday the 2nd of February, so not long until we launch that and it would be great to have you along uh, for that particular course. But until next time, thanks for watching. So back to today's video, you can see that it is quite chilly. Uh, my hands are really cold, I've got me hat on. I've got me hat on. 